Are you ready to go around the world? Sit back, relax, and buckle your seatbelt as we take off for an adventure. It's jet lag free, but filled full of fun and travel insights. The only thing you'll need to pack is a sense of humor. <laughs> Time for the award winning travel show Around the World. Welcome to Around the World. Without Arthur von Riesenberger, because he's on a little trip this time, as he often does, because you know, he does have a travel show, and that just is what he does in the world. I'm here with co-host Leanna Ursua today. Hi, how is everyone doing? We have a great show today. We have a number of guests. We're gonna go off to Prescott, Arizona, with Don Clotworthy, as he tells us what's going on with a little jaunt of a quick time vacation, because he's retired and he gets to do these things. And then off we're gonna go to Mexico, Oaxaca, as we're with Fred Brander, owner of Brander Vineyards, as he's opening a brand new museum all about Mexican art. And you just got back from Oaxaca yourself. Yes, I did, because I happen to be behind the camera a little bit on this one. <laughs> <laughs> Something different for you. Yes, and have you been to Vietnam, Liana? No, I haven't, but I, I do know someone who has. Oh, well, why don't you announce? Oh, our good friend Mark Golden mm -hmm. just went to Vietnam. I think he was there for a while, a good two to three weeks, but he's got some amazing photos to show us. And stories. And he's got stories. some doozies, like real doozies. Yeah. So that's going to be fun. And then we have Charles Ward with incredible luxury travel as he shows us this huge jet that people do for luxury travel that gets places really fast when you can afford that, which yeah. many of us can't, but it's so fun to look into the eyes of that world. We through, can live vicariously show. through his jet-setting life. So, Leanna, why don't you tell us, uh, the audience, about who you are? Oh, God, you're going to make me do that? I don't, <laughs> I don't like talking about myself. Why don't you ask me a question? What do you think people want to know? Leanna, who the heck are you? <laughs> That's too broad. Um, I'm Leanna Orsua. I'm, I'm a local Santa Barbara. Actually, I live in Carpinteria. And I work at the Santa Barbara Museum of Natural History. So if you've lived in Santa Barbara for a long time, you probably know all the great events that we put on and our amazing exhibits and programs. And enjoying and inviting travelers to Santa Barbara to come and visit that as a tourist. Yes, we have, so. we have some amazing exhibits this summer. But before I talk about one of our special exhibits, I do want to talk about traveling to some places that I think if you had the opportunity, you could buy it and maybe you do so what do you like going to exotic islands? okay i'm being thrown for a loop what <laughs> <laughs> do i like to be going where how many times have you stayed up late at night and thought to myself um i wish i could buy my own island buy an island okay are we ta are we moving into travel news at this time we are we are okay Sorry. well i'm happy to do that because i i thought many nights about buying my own island <clears throat> right right well now it will be <laughs> so tell me about that <laughs> Well, Rebecca, now instead of just traveling to Hawaii or traveling to the Bahamas, you can actually buy your own island. There are five islands that are currently for sale. Oh, what a piece of real estate. I know, right? Tell us about it. Well, are they expensive? They sound very expensive to me. I want to I wanna be able to show everybody what these islands look like. So if we can get that video. Okay, here we go. That was pumpkin. Oh, it's going fast. Pumpkin Key. And this one is in the Bahamas, that's Spectabilis Island. Just a mirror, I think that says $6 million. That's right in your budget, Rebecca. <laughs> then here's an island in Fiji for just a drop in the bucket, $17 million. And then Hope Island in the beautiful state of Maine. And how much is that? $795 million. million. Oh, this is actually more in our budget. Look at that, 750000 Horse Island. Seven, we can actually, together, you and I can buy that. I, I think we need to bring our horses to Horse Island because I think we need to try that out. You know, at least, like, you know, when you test drive a car, can we just test drive an island for well, a I weekend? Would, I would think if you're buying Horse Island, it should come with horses, but that's just me. Maybe, and maybe it comes with, yeah, like some yeah. places that are expensive come with the furniture and all that. This I, one might come with a horse. Yeah, if they're if they're if that's the name of the island, then I would imagine that they are full of horses. So I love that. That's a really interesting thing that there's actually islands for sale in the world. <laughs> I just thought that was kind of fun. That's really cool. Something we can all dream about one day. Okay, so moving on from there, I did mention that we've got this great exhibit at the at the museum, mm -hmm. and we just opened it on May 26, Memorial Day weekend, and it will go through September. So I want to be able to talk a little bit about that because um, it's pretty popular, and it is it is kind of a travel exhibit. It's National Geographic's 50 Greatest Photos. So uh, taken over a photo over exhibit. 
Is yes. it a video that you play there, or how is that? No, it? it's all photos. So the photos are from Nat Geo's 130-year history. So if you can imagine how many great photos there are. But these, these are iconic photos that you would very much recognize. We've got the Jane Goodall um, chimpanzee photo, if anybody saw that mm -hmm. movie. And then we also have the famous Afghan girl. You know, those green eyes, that photo. I wish we could show it, but I think we're going to wow. get that, I know those what photos that looks up later. Like. Wow. Yeah, they're amazing. So I definitely encourage people to come out. We've got the whole summer, so all the way up until September 2nd. And then, of course, we also have our brand new, we went through a whole year-long um, uh, renovation um, that in many of our uh, galleries, and we're in the middle of our second phase. So the first phase is opened. We have created a brand new gal gallery called the Santa Barbara Gallery that just opened last Saturday. And then we've refreshed our two other exhibits, our Mammal Hall and our Bird Hall. So. Well, I, I think you you're going to be attracting people that are viewers elsewhere in the world to Santa Barbara and even locals like me that want to go see I because so. I haven't been there for a while. It's time to go. It's time. Yes, yeah, you are overdue. Well, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we're going to have Sergeant Retired Don Clutworthy Yay! with the California Highway Patrol <laughs> who goes to Prescott, Arizona for hiking and to see the old town. So stay with us. <laughs> could count on it being there with the rise of the sun. We're proud to say we've been there every day with you. The Santa Barbara News Press plans to continue sharing the news of the day with you all through the year and beyond. It's nice to know there are some things you can still count on. The Santa Barbara News Press, serving Santa Barbara since 1855. The Colossus of Rhodes, the Great Pyramid of Giza, the Hanging Gardens of Babylon. Just tune in to the award-winning travel show, Around the World, live on Thursdays on AM 1290 and at www.atw.tv, with rebroadcasts on Thursdays at 8 p.m. and again on Saturdays at 10 a.m. for the only list that really stands out and can stand the test of time. Sergeant Don Clotworthy, a retired California Highway Patrol uh, sergeant. <laughs> sergeant, that's a sergeant. And who is now traveling in his retirement 
to Prescott, Arizona. So Don, tell us about all this. Well, it's it's great to be back here uh, on the show, I gotta tell you. And it's easiest posting photos of your trips on Facebook, <laughs> having Rebecca see them and inviting you on as a guest. It's that simple. And that's pretty much <laughs> happened here. Uh, I was in Prescott, Arizona over Memorial Day weekend and had just a fabulous time. So Rebecca asked me to come to the show and tell you all a little bit about this trip because it is not that far away because we talk about international travel, national travel, the South Pacific. You can have some really fun adventures that are not too far from Santa Barbara and Prescott's one of them. Normally people will go, I don't want to go to Arizona, it's so hot. Well, I got a place for you to go. It's Prescott, Arizona. It's in the mountains. It's mile high, 5,280 feet. It's got four seasons. It's got amazing people. It's got lots of recreation, outdoor activities, wonderful restaurants. It's just, a, it, it reminds me a little bit of, of Santa Barbara in a way, it really does, and that's why I like going there uh, quite often. This is not my first trip there, nor my last trip, but it's a fun place to go to. It's a comfortable place. It's easy to get to. It's not very expensive, and again, good restaurants, uh, good hotels, uh, and it's got that old Western charm to it, which I've always been fascinated with. People like certain things in their life, and I've always been fascinated with the Old West. And the history, yes, there are lakes. There are a number of lakes around Prescott. I think we just showed, uh, uh, I think that was Walker Lake real quickly. I'll have to look at the, uh, the monitor here. Uh, so you've got, yes. Oh, that, that is, uh, this picture is in the uh, Palace Saloon. Oh, cool. In downtown uh, Prescott, Arizona, known as Whiskey Row. And you have yes. a, a glass whiskey of whiskey Row. right there. Uh, it is the oldest saloon in the state of Arizona. It is, uh, it is, How old it, is it? It is, it is, dates back to the 1870s, and the hotel is very famous uh, with uh, three persons that most people are acquainted with, the, the Earp brothers and Doc Holliday. Uh, they all spent time in Prescott uh, prior to uh, going down to Tombstone, and of course we, most of us know this history of Tombstone and the shootout at the old, shootout at the old cake uh, corral. I think uh, I saw but, a Hollywood movie but, but about they, that. But uh, they, <laughs> the, the picture we just showed you, of course, you saw, you saw them right there on that glass at the bar, which is the original bar in the restaurant and the, bar, and the saloon. But it, uh, it dates back to the 1870s, and you're sitting there uh, having, uh, having some whiskey where the Earp Brothers and Doc Holliday all drank at. So wow. uh, there's cool. also rumors that uh, a Doc Holliday, who was a very famous gambler, spent a lot of time back in the day in that saloon winning a lot of money. So when you win money somewhere, you stay. So it has a history of Doc Holliday gambling in the Palace Cafe in downtown Prescott. What's here? Uh, that is a memorial to all veterans of uh, Yapapai County, which is a county that surrounds Prescott. And that memorial is for all veterans from all the wars, many, many wars. Uh, and that's in front of the, the courthouse in, uh, in, in downtown Prescott, which has a lot of charm to it. It's a very charming place. It's a great little spot to walk around and, and, and go shopping and, and go in antique stores. The courthouse itself, I, I can only describe it as looking like the courthouse you'd see in Back to the Future. It's very, very similar looking. Traditional uh, looking Very courthouse. traditional looking. Yes, uh, this, is, this is one of the many lakes that uh, is in close proximity to Prescott. Now Prescott is only 100 miles from Phoenix. It's uh, 50 or 60 miles from another one of my favorite places, which would be Sedona. So you can venture off to Sedona. You could venture off to a little, another little city that's, uh, that's a, a very, very charming little place called Jerome, which is an old mining town on the side of a mountain not too far, 50 or 60 miles uh, from, from Prescott. The Grand Canyon is very close, 150 miles to, to Flagstaff, Arizona. So there, the area of things to see and do in that in Prescott. Was that water warm? If we had taken yes, our yes, shoes there were some on? pictures. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, you have. You, I mean, you talked earlier about uh, horses wanting that, that wanting the horses. Oh, that looks beautiful. Well, there's plenty of horses in Prescott. You know, Prescott. The uh, the origin of Prescott dates back to the 1860s. Because there's a lot of water uh, holes. It when looks like. when yeah, uh, this is yeah. before Arizona was not a state till 1912. And uh, Prescott became an uh, incorporated city in the 1860s, right at the, around the Civil War period. It was mining, 
uh, farming, uh, ranches, cattle ranches, horse ranches. So uh, this is uh, this is kayaking, kayaking, outdoor sports is whatever you want. You want hiking, uh, you, they've got it. You've got horseback riding, they've got it. Uh, they've got mountain biking, road cycling, kayaking, canoeing. Uh, it's a charming place to go to. So if you're one that likes to travel, and you don't, maybe you don't have a lot of time, maybe you only have a long weekend, uh, go to a place like Prescott. You go to Phoenix, 100 miles, you're in a charming uh, so little that mountain your, town. What is that? A little uh, these are, I only put, gave you this picture. I have so many. But these are, that was a coffee house. You see little places like that all over downtown Prescott. So if you like those little new eclectic restaurants with charm, personality, I took a picture of this poster that was in one of the breakfast spots, Eat Breakfast and Save the World with Clint Eastwood. <laughs> that Wild uh, West history. It's got you're Wild about. West history. It's 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 got something for everyone, which now, I really like. I would imagine as hot as, as Arizona gets, there's going to be a lot of people with boats. I didn't see any boats on the lake, but um, yeah, you know, oh, oh yes, uh, th I, that particular day there. And, yes, and that particular day there. Water skiing those water activities is that yes, pretty yes yes there, there are all sorts of outdoor activities uh, that day there were no boats on that I saw but you lake. can get in the water and swim too it's not like a reservoir because some no. lakes you can't actually get in the water right because they save the water for drinking you, you right. can you, there can, you can yes you can you can swim I saw more kayakers and canoers standal paddle boarding is real 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 popular mm -hmm. but uh, it, it has a little bit of everything for everyone and are those like on it. the um, Natural natural activities close from town, so you can rent a hotel in town and take 10 minutes, 20 minutes it, to get to those outer areas of nature. It's amazing. It has everything you want. Uh, the downtown area is so so close to, uh, let's just say the the outdoor or the outdoor areas of, of or the sub, we'll call it suburban. Uh, Prescott, which is all pretty much within the city of Prescott. The lakes that you just saw in the monitor are all city, they're all city lakes. They're within the city limits of Prescott. So geographically, it's a large community. They're probably in, in Prescott, Prescott Valley, Chino Valley. There's over 100,000 people that live there. It's spread out, so you're not falling all over each other. <laughs> but uh, you can get around that. The, the transportation is very good. They and have how did Uber, you get in Lyft. There? Did you fly in? Yes, I flew in. I've both driven and to I've flown To what airport? In. Uh, you can fly into, into Phoenix, uh, Phoenix Airport. It's 100 miles from Phoenix Airport. Uh, they do have a shuttle if you'd rather just shuttle in. They have a very cheap shuttle that goes right to downtown Prescott. So it's very convenient, which is close to shopping, restaurants, hotels. And the Old World Charm, if that's what you'd like for a nice long weekend, I'd highly recommend going to Prescott, Arizona. <laughs> and what's the best time of year? You know, I know how hot Arizona gets. What would you recommend is the best time of year oh, to go? In, in, in most in Arizona, most uh, the spring or the fall, but you're in the summer months in Prescott. It is higher elevation. It's hot, but not certainly not as hot as you'd find in Phoenix, which typically is in the 110 range in the summer for four months. But in the winter time, it, it, even though it's mile high, they don't have really really cold winters there. It's not that t it'll snow, but it's very it's not very often. And if it does snow, it melts rather quickly. So it's not the elevation snow that you'd see, say, it going to the Sierras to Mammoth. You won't see that in Prescott. So you're having a maybe a you know a mild winters there. And how many times a year do you like to go there, Don? Oh, four or five times a wow. year. I'm so I'm really one like that it. likes. I'm like a four season. Home. I'm a four season type of person. And Leanna says, "Please don't move there." <laughs> she's claiming me. Like she's claiming me here. We but I do, I do exactly. like going places, and right now that's one of my favorite places to go here. So I'm really happy that you just, you saw my pictures and you invited me on the show again. Well, that's lovely to hear about one of your favorite places to go to because obviously you go there a lot. Yes. Well, thanks for joining us today. Thanks, and Don. We want to hear about your next trip, and I'll be looking Facebook to find that out. And. Hopefully, you'll get you back on this show. Very good. So thanks. Always, so a, pl always a pleasure. Aww. So stay with us. We're going to take another break, and then we're going to have Mark Golden come up Vietnam. and talk to us in Vietnam. <laughs> Woo-hoo-hoo! <laughs> 
back with Around the World without Arthur von Wiesenberger. He's traveling right now, so he's no longer with us today. So we have Liana Orsua co-hosting on the desk, and we have our next guest coming, which is Mark, Mark Golden. Golden. Hello, Mark. Hello, ladies. Welcome, Mark. Thank you for giving me a hall pass, and I can escape a half afternoon of work. Yeah. Well, no. tell us a little about yourself and where you went, Mark. Well, let's see. I am a lover of travel, and I had a rare opportunity that I really endorse for anyone who gets the offer, and that's travel with an expatriate wherever they are from. <laughs> uh, four years ago, I went to France with a friend named Eric. It was fabulous. And this spring, or winter actually, I left in February, had an opportunity to travel to Vietnam with my friend Lee. And the amusing part of the story was we talked about this in the late 90s. Then he got married, had one child, had another child. I thought the trip would never happen. I ran into a holiday part, or went into him at a holiday party at the end of December. And uh, he mentioned that he was going in February. I wiggled out of a commitment and did a fabulous trip with him. 12-day trip with travel day on each end, so spent 10 days on the ground in Vietnam, which I heartily endorse for anyone who would like a combination culture and adventure trip and lots of great food to eat along so the way. So he spoke the language, he knew all the places, and he had gone back and forth to see his family along the years so that when he took you there, he had... Uh, he had lots of connections, it sounds like. Yes, most of us know Vietnam, of course, from the war. And he was evacuated when the war ended because, as you know, the communists uh, took over the whole country. So he was evacuated at age nine and has been in Santa Barbara for most of that time, did not return for many years, and now he goes almost every year now. Is What's that his family, Mark? So, yes, the first picture is the second day we were there, we went out to his mother-in-law's house Lee is in the red t-shirt, and his wife is in the red t-shirt, or I'm sorry, in the white t-shirt standing. Uh, if you can go back to the picture, so uh, his wife is standing and Lee is in the red t-shirt. The rest of them are, are relatives that live uh, in Vietnam, and in the foreground with the gray and blue is Lee's sister who can lives we, in Brooklyn, New York. Can we talk about, I do not see a table. What's going on there? That is breakfast without a table. So he says that's how they eat most of the time. Um, there's the first bowl that is closest to us is rice. The second platter that his friend is digging into is actually pork ribs. Then there is another big bowl with small fish about the size of sardines and a number of greens. And that's breakfast. Wow. So no... Uh, no, you know, Cheerios. No, no, no Cheerios. No Cheerios. <laughs> no eggs. No, no bacon. milk and cereal, <laughs> and no sausage or egg McMuffins. As I and on the have. floor, and that floor looks spotless, by the way. It was a beautiful yes, marble floor. This is Lee with his two daughters, four-year-old and a six-year-old, and um, they were there with his wife, obviously, also. But we took off probably half the time and went on our own trips, and then we would meet up with them and and run around together and apart. But it was really fun to have the the whole family and get to know places with locals. How do you travel in Vietnam? I mean, is it train? Is it subway? You'll, is it you'll car? see some pictures. No subways. Uh, cars are very rare. Uh, there are going to be some photos of the mopeds and that's what you do most of the time. Okay. And you are not driving them because here's an interesting shot. This one, I wish we could blow it up a little bit, but you get the idea. There are umbrellas hung over a walkway that's actually a descending uh, staircase going down to a garden. And if you can look closely, you'll see they're not just rounded umbrellas. They have little ears and cat faces that are drawn on them. So I, I, love, I love colors and patterns. So I was just, I shot probably 400 pictures in, in 10 days there. So had a really fun time. I had a camera with a lens and a oh, uh, this photo. Shot. This is a woman who is wearing what's called a coolie hat. Those are made of ferns and mostly used to keep your head out of the sun. They were originally used for people working in the rice paddies so that you could work and stay cool and not pass out and drown. <laughs> so that woman is actually indoors, but it's a, it's a comfortable hat and she is selling lottery tickets. So if you're feeling lucky, it's inside, it was next to a restaurant. Oh, that's so, interesting. So that so was, it was for anyone who walks by. That's what she does. And they would have, there, a lot She's of people would approach you selling lottery tickets. So here's more of the uh, colors there. This was in another small town called, uh, it's, it's like the inverse of Hanoi. It's Oi Han. And those are silk 
lanterns. Um, I like them so much I had to buy one, so I got one, and that it was just a nice picture. That's just in front of a small shop, and um, they just had dozens and dozens, and there's just a beautiful glow to them. Uh, this is one of my favorite pictures. So you look, you see obviously a big truck in the background, a little moped to the oh right, my goodness. and then that behemoth yeah. what one, is that? two-wheeler you see is a moped. And when I say mopeds, these are not motorcycles, these are mopeds. So you kind of get the idea. It goes at least three feet to the right, three feet to the left. You can't see the person's head. You can barely oh see goodness. the top of the helmet and they're just scooting along. And so that person probably has inventory for a store or a shop that's tapped onto the back of his moped? That, yeah, that is some commercial uh, vehicle and it's someone either going to or from a delivery or to or from his shop or bringing raw materials to a shop. So it's pretty amusing because they load those things like you can't believe. And of course, their mirror is useless. So you don't know if you should get close to them. But at least if he falls over, he's padded. You know? <laughs> so he's got plenty of protection. Uh, this is one of my favorite pictures, again, with some great colors. Ooh. And this is in a place called Ha Long Bay. Uh, and you asked me how long. It's been there for over 200 million years. Oh, wow. The geology there. It's limestone islands. And Ha Long means descending dragon. And the story there was that area of Vietnam has been invaded many times and the people would pray for some sort of protection and they asked the God to protect them and the God threw down approximately 2,000 islands into the water so that they could defend their harbor. So the picture you saw is a woman that gives boat rides around the bay and then you'll see the probably the next picture but they work long eight-hour days almost all women are doing it it's strenuous work there's usually I think six to eight people in each boat and uh, really a memorable way to spend a half day that's amazing so, how beautiful it was gorgeous it was gorgeous mm. okay and so what, what tell me about the food well there'll be some food pictures so here's the, the woman again in uh, Ha Long Bay this is his uh, again Lee on the left uh, our first picture of and you myself. And, and me, I was beginning right. to wonder if you were actually there. Well, yeah, <laughs> and this is Photoshop, so you really don't know, do you? So uh, there we are. Here is us in those boats that you saw, the colorful uh, boat and the woman paddling. Uh, so what we're doing is going into limestone caves in the boats. Wow. So you can kind of see the stalactites, uh, and those are the ones hanging from the ceiling, uh, coming down. Not only could you go into caves and other little uh, cavernous waterways, but there were other, if I had, you know, infinite slides I could post, there were some beautiful caves that we walked around in also. But this was a water cavern that you could go in and, uh, and enjoy the, uh, the shade out of the sun for a little while. So that was Was it humid, hot? What time of year was it? It was gorgeous. It was every day. It never got below 65 at night, a lot like Santa Barbara. Actually, actually between 70 and 80 day and night oh, the whole time nice. we we're there and february and march are perfect times to go because it's not real hot and humid and this it's like california it runs long north south and we hit six different cities up and down this is me in a coolie hat <laughs> that's me on the left by the way and um, <laughs> what i'm doing is talking to my best friend the tailor so lee and i went there knowing that we might uh, visit this tailor and he told me that he had one lined up so I did not buy that blue jacket. Uh, it's a little bright for me, but he did size me with it. And then I ordered one suit. Most for time for my work, I wear wool suits. So over there, I ordered a silk linen suit. So I had one suit made. Lee had five suits made, and that was the tailor that did it. So he measured us. We came back in two days, and he checked us with the jackets without sleeves. You stepped into the pants, make sure that sizing is right. Really, that And then quickly. he finished it off. Wow. Oh yeah, That's and amazing. then you, and then you return about five days later for the finished uh, suit. So you would do that at the beginning of your vacation, start your suit, so by yeah. the end you can complete it for a right. custom-made suit. And was yep. it reasonable price? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Less than a third of what you'd pay for a suit here. Oh, wow. So, well, that sounds great. Yes, it was fabulous. That's great. What was the highlight? If you had to pick one thing, what would you say was the mm. highlight of your trip? Mm -hmm. uh, I would say the Ha Long Bay, just because it was different, but the cities were gorgeous and very, very safe. I've traveled uh, every continent but Antarctica and been to you know, dozens and dozens of cities. Some of the very safest cities I've ever been in. Was not approached by a beggar, 
uh, streetwalker, drug pusher, mm -hmm. uh, anyone bothering me to buy retail or come in their shop, nothing at all. They would just smile and... Now you said that traveling, that. everybody That's was nice. on scooters. Nice. Were you both on your own scooter? No, normally you would hire a scooter driver and you would get on the back, they'd give okay. you rosary beads, you would clutch them and give the Hail Marys and scoot around town. <laughs> Great. Well, Mark, thank you for joining us and sharing your trip of Vietnam. That was fun. You're welcome. And, uh, and we aren't going to see any food slides then, huh? Well, um, we're I, out of time. I okay. think we're out of time today, okay. but we'll okay. come back hopefully and then see them next time. There was a lot of fabulous food. Mm. And I was going to drool, so it's probably ne best that I don't show. see it. We'll have to come back. Yeah, I might have to. All right, thank you. <laughs> thank you for Thanks. being here. Thank you. thank you, Mark. Next up, let's go to Oaxaca, Mexico with Fred Brander as he goes shopping for beautiful art. <laughs> Without Dear Arthur, who's on a trip today, we have Liana Orso, who's co-hosting the show. And here we are with a wonderful guest who's actually creating a museum in Los Olivos it's for his exciting. passion of collecting Mexican art. We have Fred Rander in studio. Good Hello. afternoon, Fred. Hello, Rebecca. <laughs> Hello, Liana. So, Fred, tell us where this passion of art comes from and what your, what your vision is for this museum you're creating. Well, I would say I really do gravitate towards Latin American culture. I was born and raised in Buenos Aires, Argentina. And, uh, um, you know, Argentina, I, I was there a month ago, but it is far to travel. I've, since I left Argentina, say, you know, 35, 40 years ago, I... Uh, really found that Mexico has a tremendous culture, uh, very Latin, of course, like, like Argentina, but it's a lot closer to get to. And it's so varied. It's a wonderful country that's so very geographically and uh, topographically and uh, culturally, historically. It's fascinating, you know. So you go there often? How many times do well, you Well, you know, there? I just got back. Uh, I know I saw you in Oaxaca, was that maybe six weeks ago? Well, I was in uh, Mexico City just last weekend. Really? Yeah, so for kind of a Memorial Day weekend trip, and it was great. And, uh, I, you know, last year I went nine times, and I t tried to go, rather than go to the coastal towns, the beach towns like, say, Acapulco or Puerto Vallarta or Cancun, I go more to the colonial cities because the colonial cities are the ones that really have the history behind them, and certainly they have a lot of the culture and the uh, ensuing uh, folk art. And Mexico City as well then. Exactly. Oh, wow. That's interesting because I didn't get to see that. I was able to take some shots and pictures of you, which was ex exciting for me. And I went with my girlfriend to be able to see and she could help us out. But that was really interesting to see how you collect your art. Um, we have a video of that. Can you tell us before we roll the video of what your mission was on this particular trip? Yeah, well, Oaxaca is one of the region, main regions of folk art in um, Mexico, you know, certainly in the, at the same level of Michoacan would be another state, Mexico City, um, let's say uh, Jalisco, where Guadalajara is. Uh, but uh, Oaxaca is uh, one of my favorite destinations uh, because the food is great there. So I think we, we got a chance to try some of that. But um, it's, um, it's an old colonial town, and uh, they have, they're 
well, really well known for their pottery. They're very well known also for their wood carving. Their wood carving of these um, alebrijes or whimsical, magical, uh, fantasy inspired figures and wonderfully painted. Um, I don't know if we, I think we, we saw some of them. We didn't really go to uh, necessarily a craftsman or a artisan that made them. Well, we, no, I guess we did. We did. Did we? Because yeah. at that time, because I, I did, I don't recall that. I recall a lot of the pottery right. and the people that were creating things with ceramics and things. Right, but we did see some in town. I, I know in Oaxaca City. How much time were you? Uh, did you spend in Oaxaca while you were there? Well, what it was maybe four days, I think, three, four days. And what would you say? What type of food? How does Oaxaca's food compare to, say, other parts of Mexico? Well, I would say um, they have, of course, a lot of talent. I mean, Oaxaca is kind of international in terms of there's a lot, it's exposed to a lot of tourism. And, of course, you have a lot of chefs that maybe uh, collaborated with some of the best chefs in Europe. So there's some cultural ex ex interchange there. Uh, of course, like a lot of regions in Mexico, there's a lot of natural in ingredients. Uh, it's a real culinary uh, Mac, well, you know, abundance of the everything. food was awesome. And well, course, let's take a look at our trip, including the grasshoppers, right? <laughs> the in the grasshoppers are so much fun. Hi, I'm Fred Brander, and I'm here in Oaxaca on a shopping trip, and I'm here to uh, collect uh, more art for my museum. I uh, collect uh, Mexican folk art, and Oaxaca is a great destination for that. There's a lot of art sims here. Um, you know, they work in different media, like in pottery, and they work in metal. Um, some excellent wood carvers, and uh, this is a wealth, um, a real mecca for folk art in Mexico. Fred enjoys going from gallery to gallery and talking to the artists to hear their latest creative endeavor. Mariachi is, uh, is the Oaxaca, no? Es correcto. Pero que es el hermano. Es el hermano de Sergio. Sergio, no? Fred speaks Spanish, so it's easy for him to ask them questions about what they're creating. Pero no, no es muy famoso, Hector, no? Pues no es o menos. O sea, tiene... And off he goes to the next stop. With his passion for art collecting, he's found the inside track of where to go next. He finds interesting enclaves in all kinds of areas on the outskirts of Oaxaca to speak to another artist and ask him about his creative process and what he has on the drawing table. Fred Brander has been able to discover very interesting different styles of Mexican art and contemplate what he wants to collect for his next acquisition of art. These artists want to show Fred what they've been working on and how the piece came together from their perspective. <laughs> Many of the artists work from their homes in the countryside of Oaxaca. Their home is their art studio where they give tours. <laughs> It's an intimate view into that artist's world. The art of printmaking is especially interesting to Fred. In visiting a print studio, he was able to look closely at the fine art involved in the etching process to make the prints. Fred is especially drawn to the bright, colorful pieces of Mexican folk art. And then it's back to the hotel, and in this case, at Casa de Sierra Azul, where he can relax and contemplate which of the beautiful art he saw he wants to ship back to the Brander Vineyard to his on-site museum, a celebration of Fred Brander's love of Mexican art. Oh, wow. That was amazing, Fred. And I think that in shot was cool. the museum you're creating in Los Olivos. Can you tell us about that? Yes, that's the Brander Museum of Folk Art, which is mostly a collection of Mexican uh, folk art. And uh, it's something that I reflects my 10, 12 years of collecting, uh, you know, art or folk art in, in Mexico. And uh, I have some pieces, maybe a little bit of, from Argentina, but, you know, I would say it's 98% uh, Mexican. and. Um, I have a gallery inside the Brander uh, Winery that is available for, for you know, if you make an appointment call, you can see it. Uh, right now we have some pieces of, in Micho of Michoacan, uh, but the main museum, um, that'll probably be open by the end of the year. And so how would people get to that? Well, that would be a mat uh, matter of going uh, on our website, which is uh, 
BMOFA, Brainerd Museum of Folk Art, dot org. And you can go into, on to that website probably in about 30 days. I mean, it's, we're in the process of revamping it. And, and you can make find a reservation. That link to the, um, the yeah, and you'll be able to see some of the pieces. Brandon? You'll be able to see some of the pieces, and there'll be information about when, what days the museum will be open, and uh, how you can contact us to make an appointment. And you can also go on the other way by going into Brander. Yeah, and then you know you just call Brander and say, hey, I'd like to see the, the gallery that's open right now, and we can make an appointment for you right now. Fantastic. That's and how, lo how large will your museum be, Fred? Well, it's about 8,000 square feet. No. Wow, that's sizable. Yeah. So, Leanna, let's go see it when you I would it. love to. <laughs> it sounds amazing. And you said it's opening when again? Uh, the, towards the end of the year. Okay. Excellent. What an exciting to addition that out. to the San Inez Valley. Absolutely. That's yes. Fantastic. But you know, one of the reasons also I collect folk art is because there is a certain resemblance or um, relationship to, to wine. Because, you know, our good folk art has a sense of place, just like good wine. You know, you can tell, well, you can, in a blind tasting, you can smell and taste it. Ah, oh, this must come from this. It must be made from this type of grape. And you can do the same thing with folk art. You can tell what part of Mexico it came from, and in some cases, if it's a really good piece, who made it? So, My yeah. goodness, there's a lot to know because I felt quite overwhelmed with all the intricacies of the Mexican folk art, and so to know that someone that studies it a lot could actually even identify the artist, artist by looking at separate pieces. Right. That's fantastic, Fred. Will, will the art be hobby. separated by region, or is it all Well, you know, together? right now we have in the barrel room of the Brander Winery, we are putting together uh, an exhibit called The Treasures of Michoacan, which is Michoacan State, and it's mostly pineapples, uh, you know, those big pineapple uh, ceramics and uh, some other things from Michoacan. But Terrific, Fred. Thank you for joining us today. And Thank you, Rebecca. To Thank that you, Liana. And to drink your new wine. And, and stay, stay tuned for the after party, because after our next guest, which will be Charles Ward, talking about luxury travel and jet travel, we're going to come back and have a little exciting after party with Fred Brander as we taste his wines, and he leads us through that tasting. Very right. good. <laughs> stay tuned. Sometimes people fall on hard times. There are lots of families in our community that can't afford to feed their families. That means kids go to school hungry, and their parents don't even know where the next meal will come from. The Unity Shop treats these families with respect, allowing them to shop in the free food store for stuff their families like and use. Right now, we are desperately in need of funds to buy turkey and chicken for families who will go without this holiday season. If you can help, please go to unityshop.org. Arthur Von Wiesenberger today. We're wishing him well on his trip. My co-host is Leanna Orsua and in studio we have Charles Ward who is one of the, gosh, he's one of the experts in the world about luxury travel and he brings it around the world as he travels. And so Charles, thank you for coming today. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much for the invitation. It's uh, exciting to be here. And tell us what you do and, and how your life is revolving around this I am so lucky. I have the greatest life because I work with, through my company that's 38 years old, IdeaWorks Global in Dallas, with the uh, most expensive toys and the wealthiest people in the world. And we bring them together. We bring them together when they're playing polo or going to the Super Bowl or this sort of thing. And so I've been uh, fortunate to represent the Santa Barbara Polo Club for the last 17 years, almost two decades. And during that time, from the very first day, we have had private jet companies. So I've had the opportunity to work with Learjet and Challenger and Global Express and the um, Gulfstream 650ER. This is a pin of the 650ER. Do you know it can fly around the world with one stop? 
Oh my God. It's wow. amazing. Wow. Well, tell us about the video you brought with you today. Well, um, a new client that we have is Santa Barbara based. It's actually right down on State Street and it's called Silver Air. And the Silver Air team has acquired a Boeing business jet. Now, when you're at the airport and you see the uh, uh, Southwest Airlines plane, imagine if it didn't have 130 seats, but instead just 16 and uh, two showers, and it can oh. be chartered mm -hmm. because never before has a BBJ in the United States been unrestricted charter. That means it a company can call up and make arrangements to fly around the world with this BBJ. So we're quite fortunate to have them as a sponsor and a client. The company president, uh, Jason Middleton, just unveiled this BBJ down at Van Nuys about a month ago. And he walked through and we have the video with let's, Jason explaining let's see it. it. Well, let's see that video. That's uh, Jason Middleton. Really excited to announce our BBJ is finally here. We're in Van Nuys, California for exclusive invite only viewing uh, and reception. And uh, I'm gonna give you a quick tour. So let's uh, follow. Well, you'll notice first thing, the aircraft's built with its own air stair. So we can go anywhere, land, drop the stairs down and climb back on. We don't have to have uh, stairs like the airlines. Here. This is our chief flight attendant on the airplane, uh, Lauren. How's it going? And if you look up here, we have the cockpit. So these, these guys up here are the pilots. Say hi to these guys. They fly this sucker anywhere in the world. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> and this is kind of the crew area up here. And then we have our four galley. And this is a, it's a huge guy. It seems small, but it's a huge galley for an airplane. The flight attendants can make five five star meals on board, serve it. And uh, it's amazing. They get everything prepped up here, ready to go. And they send it out to the cabin, which is nice. So we walk into our main uh, salon area here. Oh, really? And um, this is where, this is what a BBJ experience is all about. We can fly 16 passengers really comfortably. Um, we can sleep nine very comfortably. And we fly, uh, it'll fly pretty much anywhere in the world nonstop. We have a full wet bar with any type of alcohol, mixed drink, um, champagne, some of the best wines in the, in the, uh, the world are on board. We have our full dining experience here. Our flight attendants can prep everything in the galley and they, um, they will uh, serve up whatever our clients want en route. And uh, you can have a five-star restaurant experience in the air at 40,000 feet traveling to uh, Europe. Satellite TV on board, we've got global internet, we've got domestic internet, high-speed internet. Um, so now we have our small lav. Um, it's the, you can see it's not your typical um, airline lavatory. Um, you've got everything you need in here. We've got robes, we've got towels, we've got a forward shower in the aircraft. Um, all of the, you know, all of the um, um, skin care needs somebody wants, we have them all on board. Uh, moving back, so um, this is the office area of the aircraft. We've got, um, this also can be a secondary bedroom, and um, if you want to have a look here, full desk, we've got printer capabilities on board. This folds down to a bed for sleeping, or it's a private office, uh, all the, uh, all the clients are en route. So very comfortable. This actually is my favorite place in the airplane. Super quiet, um, absolutely amazing place to uh, to fly and enjoy your, enjoy your trip. We've got a full king size bed, uh, hotel quality, four seasons quality sheets and linens and beddings. We'll provide our guests sir, anything that you would see in a four star um, uh, hotel suite you'll see in this aircraft. I mean, from you know ultra luxurious robes to some of the best chocolates we can find on the planet. Um, the best bedding, um, That's nice. we've got, if you look on board, I mean, we thought this aircraft is, I mean, we have everything available. Even if you want to come on board and do yoga, we've got yoga mats on tour. And there's, and there's room to do it. The way this thing's set up, it's intended to use, you can take off out of here, out of LA, or New York, or wherever you're going, at the and land at your destination, just in time to go to your meeting, and while you're en route, you can, you can eat, sleep, drink, shower, have breakfast, get ready for get ready for bed, take a you know, get ready for work, take a shower, put your suit on out of your wardrobe and get off the airplane like you just stepped out of your hotel suite and go to your meeting. That's the magic of the BBJ. 
So this is the master uh, lav or master bathroom. Um, full big shower back here. Um, one of the things we thought about is, you know, we have whatever anyone could ever need. Obviously people bring their own things, but we want to make sure we provide extra for them. So things like men's shaving kits, and, um, whatever type of skincare products you want, and uh, secondary lab. So that's it. That's the BBJ. Welcome aboard. Well, I just want to move into that. I know. That was, that was so gorgeous. <laughs> Don't you have, have to get out thing. when we arrive? Yeah. I mean, it's like... Well, our thanks to Jason for taking us on that tour. And, you know, he lives here. He's the president of the company. And uh, we're really pleased that Santa Barbara could have a company with this one of a kind, the BBJ, that can be chartered. Oh, wow. That's really cool. And it lives at a Val Nice, but if you, somebody in Santa Barbara wanted to charter it, all they had to do was give them a call. And they could do sure. that. Because, you know, we were talking about, and during the break when we were watching the video, Charles was talking about, hey, you can rent out for a destination wedding. You can do all kinds of great events in this airplane. Yeah. Can you imagine eight couples uh, and do a destination wedding? The parents, a couple, a few friends, mm -hmm. and they go to Florence or to Asia or to Tahiti, wherever they would want to go. And I think... The trips may be more exciting than when they get there. <laughs> it's possible. I can see why. I know. You can get your hair, do your show, yeah. get all ready, then you step off the plane feeling like a million bucks because you've rested. Exactly. You feel like a million dollars going in and coming out That's right. both ways. Well, thank you, Charles, for visiting us. If people want to find out more about thank what you. you're up to, how would they contact you? Uh, what I'm up to? Yeah, how people oh, want to find out Oh, they've got to be on their toes looking. <laughs> um, now, uh, one of the other things I'm up to is that I have a co-host, Tara Gray, who's great, okay. and we have a new show here on TVSB, and you can see it on Thursdays at 6 p.m., and then you can see it on YouTube uh, after that. We, we just did our third uh, episode um, with a great lady polo player and attorney, and so... Um, we are really excited about putting it together because it's behind the great. scenes. It's not the polo action. It's behind the scenes. And so what's your website so they could find out more it's about anything about this? It's sbpololife.com. It's so easy. Pololife.com with an SB on the front. Terrific, Charles. Thank you for coming. Thank you, and Charles. And stick around for the after party, which is coming Absolutely. Up, and you all join us, too. Thank you. <laughs>the around the world and Arthur we sure wish you were here right now as we have the after party with the wine <laughs> tasting hosted by Brander Fred Brander from Fred Brander Vineyards oh my goodness you would think I would have finished a glass by now the way I messed that up but anyways <laughs> Fred we're so happy that you're here hosting our after party tell us about the wines you brought well we brought our two best wines of course our, we really are known for Sauvignon Blanc and uh, I brought a bottle of the Brander's 2017 Los Olivos, which is mostly from our grapes, grown in um, our vineyard in Los Olivos. And it's um, about you know 90% Sauvignon Blanc. We put a little Semillon and then put a little Riesling. We, we grow a few other small uh, you know, oh, acreage varieties. Like but uh, this Sauvignon Blanc, of course, like all our Sauvignon Blancs, we like to do it mostly in stainless steel. So it's very aromatic. We bottle it young. This is, this is a 17, so it was bottled by about, about two, three months ago. Since day one, we've really concentrated on that variety. My dad and I planted the vineyard in 1975, got our first crop in 1977. So actually the first Sauvignon Blanc, the first production from our vineyard, we submitted it to the LA County Fair and got a gold medal, which is the mm -hmm. first wine from Santa Barbara County to get a gold medal uh, at the LA County Fair. Well, I'll so drink to that. Cabernet has had uh, a more of a checkered history from, let's say, the, what the perception of Santa Barbara County Cabernet wasn't very good in the beginning because it's a harder variety to tame. It tends to grow like a weed. And you have to do many things in the, in the vineyard to really get the proper flavors without being vegetal or, and if you get a really nice, uh, you know, I think Los Olivos is great for Cabernet Sauvignon. You do your, your homework with viticulture and you can make a really good Cabernet Sauvignon. And this is uh, a 2016 uh, Cabernet, 100% from our grapes. 
and um, we also make a reserve. But this is uh, kind of a junior version of the reserve, and uh, it's wonderful. It just got that berry fruit, the cassis character, uh, some blackberry, and it's got enough liveliness, not too much alcohol, not too much oak, so it's very uh, easy to drink. I mean, being a 16 is very young, but it's still, it's wonderful balance and it uh, very light in the tannins too it's got well a nice you know roll it, off the it's tongue. got definitely it's got tannins but the tannins are ripe yeah uh, because Absolutely. you know you look at the color it's fairly dark so yeah, that's a good dark. indication that there's plenty of tannins but the fact that it's smooth means those tannins are ripe enough that they're not bitter or astringent and I know you're going to be pouring at our wine festival at the museum later this month. Are, are these going to be the wines you'll be bringing? The two main wines, yeah. We can't uh, wait to, to be there. Well, I actually brought a gift. Um, I, I wanted to have enough to go around, but I'm, I'm missing one. But I know Mark already has one at home. So this is a gift for you. It's a wine lanyard. Let me put it on your head. I think it's for Hannibal um, Lecter. <laughs> I've, I've got one for Rebecca. It, it doubles, and, Fred, let me tell you. Oh, this is, um, <laughs> it has a little leather. Can, never mind. We'll this is something that, that we'll be selling at the, at the wine festival, the Santa Barbara Wine and Food oh, Festival sure at the I museum on June 30th. So what you do is you take your wine glass okay. and, okay. You, and you put it in the stem, you put the stem in oh. the lanyard oh, part. Oh, oh, oh. So let me help you. Show me. Wrap yes. It. Oh, this is a nice little gadget. Let's see how this gadget works. So what, and it's great when you are eating because it frees up your hand so you can actually use you can your use hand a knife for. a and a fork. Right, or exactly. You hold the plate and eat with one. So I, I have one. nails here, but I can do this. I have done it many times before. <laughs> so variety <laughs> checkpoint. <laughs> Officer, <laughs> Officer, yeah. Link her up. Okay, here we go. I'm worried. Hold the glass. Hold the glass. On my dress. My dress is pink. You so won't see it on either of your dresses. Fred and I have to worry. How did I do this before? Okay. I but think in it's. Any case. No, 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 no. Here we go. So put that in there. Let's put the. See the glass. Push it in. This is like. How many people does it take to put it in? Like <laughs> okay, we got it. We got to close out now. Oh, we got it. Okay. <laughs> Success. It worked. Uh, it really did. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. I'm just going to drink the wine, but I want to thank our wonderful producers of the show today. We have Mike Nicholson, we have Ken Baxter on sound, and we want to thank Arthur for letting us take it away on the show. And we miss him terribly, and we can't wait till he's back again next time. To Arthur. Thanks to our guests, Fred Brandon, Mark Golden, and, and our co host, cheers to everybody on the show. show. And cheers, and come back again the next time we go around the world. <laughs> Let's go together. Cheers. Thank you for traveling with us today on Around the World. We hope you'll join us for another adventure next week. In the meantime, all of us at Around the World wish you happy trails. <laughs>